want to use a four millimeter um, rod of some sort to as a template to make my rings for my chain. I'm going to cut the silver wire into manageable lengths and then I'm going to use the drill to make my rings. Right, now I've got my little coils, I'm going to cut each ring and they will hopefully look good and neat when I'm done. Well, we can do this, Williams. has made that. So I've cut quite a lot of my rings already and I've started pushing the two pieces together. So the way you do that is kind of you push you kind of push one so you imagine you've got the two bits like that so you push them like that and back and then like that and back and then it kind of uses a spring action it creates a spring action so that they hold together better. But I started doing that with these new parallel pliers and of course they've got these little lines on it and it has actually created some indentations um, which is a pain in the bum um, kind of ruins the look of them really so I'm going to try putting some masking tape over those lines and see if that helps that at all if not we've got problems people problems masking tape is still leaving a mark so now I'm going to try electrical tape so I've split up my rings which I've created into two separate halves half in here and half here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ones which are closed, which are nice, neat circles, well, hopefully most of them are neat, <laughs> and I'm going to solder those joins shut. So for that I'm going to use some silver hard grade solder. So this is already cut lengthways, and now I need to cut little tiny snippets off there. This is what the borax looks like, it's like a white powder. And in here I've just got water. Right, it's the morning after the night before and I'm still working on my jump rings. I managed to close quite a few yesterday but I've got more to do which are ready here in my borax solution. So I'm going to put another piece of solder on the, one, on the two that didn't look great and then I'm going to continue to solder all my jump rings until I've got half of all my jump rings soldered then I'm going to join them by put, using one soldered ring in the middle and putting two unsoldered on the outside. So then I'll have lots of groups of three lengths. Then I need to kind of lay out my choker and my beads and try and work out 
how many links I need for where it needs to drop, and the phone's ringing. I can never get anything done without the phone ringing or, ma'am, give me strength. Back in a minute. Where was I? Right, soldering more jump rings. Let's get to it. We haven't got a great deal of time. Some of these joins are brilliant, though I may say so myself. So I'm just placing a tiny bit of solder behind the join. And I've got all the joins facing me. Really fiddly with these tiny little rings and tiny bits of solder. Oh, they're all done. They've all done apart from one, I think. This is where I'm at. I've got two rivets. They're not cut down to quite the right size yet because I need to work out how much I need sticking out the bottom and also need to drill a hole through that, which I'm gonna do in college for my silver wire to hook through. Um, I've got my beads. I think what I'm gonna do next is wire up my beads. So I need six beads for this project. I've actually got seven, so I'm gonna pick my six favorite ones. Um, and then I'm going to put a piece of silver wire through and put a little loop on either end and that's so that I can attach my jump rings either side to that. Yeah, I could just squeeze that quite tight against there and then it will have a hook like that and then I guess if I hooked on, let's test this out, so I've got a ring here, if I open that, put on a soldered ring so that one's closed. And then put the silver wire on. Now I can start building up a bit of length and work out if I actually do need more silver wire. It might actually work out alright, you know? Thing is, I'm going to need to get each little hook either side of the bead um, exactly the same. I might put my jacket over my lap so that I can catch this that I drop. And if I mark on a, with a pen where I've the diameter, you know, how far down on these pliers I've bent the wire around then I should be able to get it around about the same size again and again. Okay, I've just marked either side of where the wire was so I know it's got to be in between those two lines. So there's a hook. So now I'm going to work out how much material it takes to make that hook and then I have to add the bead to that and times by two length of the wire for the hook. Black mark is where it meets. There's probably a much simpler way of doing this, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so it's pretty much flat again. Now I'm going to use my calipers. These are really great for um, taking a very precise measurement so I can measure from there to there that's the precise measurement and then I hold it up against my metal ruler so 22 times 6 it means we need 132 millimeters to make for just the hooks and then the bead should be approximately the same Okay, so the largest one I think is about eight and a half millimeters. Okay, then. So 
183 millimeters altogether. Yeah, so there's plenty of wire. Okay. Obviously, the bead has to go on first. On that end, it looks like a hell of a lot of wire. Anyway, see if our measurement is correct. The bead has got a little bit of movement back and forth and quite happy with my hooks. Right, I grabbed my iPad. This is the design, this is what we're going for. So these are my beads laid out and this is the one that I'm thinking about you know, wondering how I'm going to do the two loops. Obviously, I've done all of them with a hole straight through the middle. I think it would have been, it would have been far too difficult to try and do a hole that went in a kind of Y shape and meet that all up perfectly, um, especially in the time scales that I've got. So, that part of it will change slightly and there'll be a loop out of either end and it'll just mean that that bead will be slightly lower down and those two, um, those two jump rings will hook onto the centre, you know, it will be like that. And the two jump rings will have to hook around one hook. Mm, it's debatable as to whether the two jump rings will fit through that hoop. So now you can see one side is most definitely bigger than the other. You see that? That actually fits so much better and hangs right now. Right, centre bead done, only another five to do, let's get on with this. silver hooks on either end so there's five here this is the one that has the larger end that end for two hooks so that's going to be the center one I'm going to add my jump rings so I'm going to do that by taking two open jump rings and putting a soldered one in the center then I'm going to add one end to a bead. I've laid out my choker to give me some idea of how many links I'm going to need. Obviously because I've never made a chain before or any kind of necklace or anything like that before, I don't really know how um, how long each piece of chain is going to be. So what I want it to do really is sit between the cleavage because it is, you know, it's supposed to be shopping, shocking and it's subverting, you know, patriarchal religions such as Catholicism um, and Christianity. Well, all religions really are, are totally patriarchal these days. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I can now continue with my soldering, etc, etc. Imagine that, that would attach either side where those rivets are, somehow. And then that will hang down, the cross will obviously be on so it hangs straight as well. I think I'm going to have a hook that goes through a hole on each rivet so you can unhook it to undo it to take it off and pull the rivet out so I can either make it longer or shorter there if I decide I need to it's pretty cool I reckon 
the never ending chain. It's not even that long, mate. It took, <laughs> it's taken like two days. OMG. Show him. Maybe I'll wear it down there. He'll be like, hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> 